Marco. Polo. Was broadcast in seven parts from February 22nd to April 4th, 1964. I'm sorry I'm late, okay? I, I saw Paul McCartney. I saw the Foo Fighters. Celebrated America. Marco Polo may be known as the point where most people give up watching an order. Because all seven episodes are completely lost. The audio track and some pictures survive though. And the rest is up to our imagination. If you don't already know, it never occurred to anybody at the BBC that home video would be a thing. Actors unions made reruns unprofitable. And black and white material was considered junk. So for a good ten years until 1978, they just taped over everything. It's awfully questionable why older American series, like I Love Lucy, Lassie, Leave it to Beaver, The Twilight Zone, are all perfectly preserved, while the BBC is quick to destroy history to save a few pounds. But I digress. There are at once 152 episodes of Doctor Who missing, but that's been brought down to 97 over the last 37 years. Which is kind of fucking remarkable. Last Discovery was a whopping 9 episodes found in late 2013. Since then, there's been a ton of rumors of more being found, particularly a rumor that all 7 episodes of Marco Polo had been found. Which is totally believable, seeing how it was broadcast overseas to 19 different countries more than any other serial, but nothing has come to fruition. It's one of the most sought after serials for fans and historians alike, and for good reason. We start on a snowy mountain range somewhere on Earth. The TARDIS isn't working, shocker, and they're captured by a group of Mongols. Tagana, leader of the Mongols and peace emissary for Nogai Khan, wants to kill them, when they're told to stand down by a random white dude. This guy happens to be Marco Polo, legendary Venetian explorer, and he lets the force stay with him on his way to Kublai Khan's Chinese palace in the year 1289. Marco refuses to let the doctor fix the TARDIS as he plans on giving it to Kublai Khan so the ruler will let him go back to Italy. Tagana plans to poison the caravan's water supply. Susan becomes buddy-buddy with the young Ping Cho, who's traveling for her arranged marriage to a 75-year-old man. While crossing the Gobi Desert, the girls get caught in a sandstorm while spying on Tagana. Tagana saves them, but does more odd things to remind us he's evil. He then cuts open the water supply. Interesting choice after we saw him buy poison earlier, especially considering he saves none for himself. I guess he realized arsenic wasn't going to pad things out for seven episodes. Then after realizing, oh shit, I'm dehydrated too, he gets Marco to let him ride out to an oasis alone and get them water. But he just drinks a little and then spills the rest on the ground, because, you know, he's evil. That's okay though, because the doctor who Marco has let sleep in the TARDIS because he's about to die, finds condensation on the walls and collects it to drink. Ping Cho is telling some long-winded, indecipherable story about pot-smoking bandits when Tagana skips out and goes to the Cave of... Sk no, Cave of 500 Eyes. Here he meets fellow Mongols who plan on attacking the caravan, capturing the TARDIS, and overthrowing Kublai all for no guy Khan. Barbara follows him in, and is captured by the Mongols. Marco and friends enter the cave as well and kill a Mongol holding her hostage. Tagana somehow remains innocent despite Barbara telling everyone that she followed him in. He also convinces Marco to turn against the companions, and they all become prisoners after Marco catches the doctor red-handed breaking in and fixing the TARDIS. Ian escapes from their tent and is about to attack a guard when he sees the guy already has a knife in his chest. Tagana hasn't given the signal yet for his Mongol friends to attack, but with everyone awake and ready to fight bandits, he has no choice but to fight with them, and kill the raid leader when they do show up, which makes the others scatter. Ping Cho manages to steal the TARDIS key from Marco and give it to Susan. The group make it inside, but of course Susan has to go back and say bye to Ping Cho, which fucks everything up when she's caught by Tagana. Ping Cho runs away soon after this, and Ian goes to get her back while the others make it to Kublai Khan's palace. A really shifty looking guy, complete with eye patch and spider monkey from the Pirates of the Caribbean set, has swindled money from Ping Cho, and in cahoots with Tagana, stolen the TARDIS. Ian and Ping Cho track the TARDIS down just as Tagana tracks them down. Before a fight can happen, Kublai Khan's riders come to the rescue and... kill the shifty guy. <laughs> then they all go to the palace. 
Ping Cho's fiancé dies off screen. Lucky her. The companions figure out that Tagana has been sabotaging the caravan so that no guy's armies could move in on Kublai Khan. And that he's probably gonna assassinate Kublai now. He tries exactly this, but Kublai uses his visor as a meat shield before Marco enters the room. They duel, Marco disarms him, the guards rush in, and Tagana goes full seppuku and kills himself with a guard's spear. Marco lets the companions go, Kublai tells Marco he can go home, and that's it. I'll just say it now. This is by far the best purely historical serial the show will have. I think. There's so many different settings and focus on scenery, it's a very stark contrast to Edge of Destruction. And all the characters are really excellent. Tagana gets a bit cartoony with his extreme villainy, but you're made to hate him anyway, it's all in good fun. Kublai Khan and his interactions with the Doctor are really good, and so are Susan and Ping Cho's interactions, surprisingly. But Marco is really the star of the show here, and the most three-dimensional character, due to his fluctuating friendship with both the Companions and Tagama. Waris Hussein, who directed An Unearthly Child, really did a great job here. I only wish he directed more serials so that we could see his work here. It's a damn shame these episodes are missing. But it's even more of a goddamn shame that the BBC hasn't animated them yet. They say, "Well, it's expensive, we can only afford to animate two episodes of Serial. Are you kidding me? Look at the animation! You know, it's not spectacular, it's not Fantasia, hell, it's not even in color! It's on par with C-Lab 2021! How in this year, 2015, where independent animators make prettier things on YouTube for practically nothing, can it be that expensive? It's absurd. Everyone wants to see Marco Polo, and the only official release was a 30-minute condensed reconstruction of the whole seven-episode serial. It covers the basics, it's certainly watchable, but it's not the fleshed-out treatment that this serial deserves. Thank God for Loose Cannon's reconstructions, but I will advise you now against the popular color version out there. The color recon is old, not taking advantage of a ton of new telesnaps that have been found since. Plus, the color's not great anyway. They've put out a black and white version more recently, and it's greatly improved, with a ton of new pictures, images a lot more sharp, and the audio much more crisp, which really helps when you can't read the actor's lips. You could say the color version has some continuity issues as well. Just look at these different shots of Akamat, the Mongol raid leader, taken from the same scene. <laughs> I don't know where they got this blue-tinted white guy from, but it's pretty far off from the real thing. So watch that if you got some patience, or you could check out the short BBC version. But please, give this a try in some respect, because it's one of the great ones. Please like, subscribe, comment, support if you can. Thanks for your time and space. This is Bob Bodingham, Dematerializing.